Okay, there we go. Um, before we start, I just want to look at um, one scripture. That is, um, if we can turn to Hebrews 2, okay, Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 1. Therefore, we must give the more earnest heed to the things we have heard, lest we drift away. Okay. Um, it, the context, if you read the next few verses, talks about salvation, talks about um, you know, the whole um, aspect of uh, not falling away, not neglecting salvation, um, and, and so on. Which was which God has witnessed with signs, wonders, miracles, right? So um, the exhortation, verse one, is this: Give the more earnest heed to the things we have heard, lest we drift away. So this scripture talks about the possibility of uh, possibility of drifting away, drifting away from all that we could be strong in, right? Or all that all that we could be established in. Right, and uh, and if you look at the word drifting, it's it's not something that happens overnight, right? It's uh, something that happens over a period of time, over a period of time, uh, because we've been negligent, okay? Because we have not looked into certain things, we've not been alert about certain things, and this drifting happens, right? It's like um, it's like putting on weight, okay? Or you know you don't realize it. You just maybe overeating and uh, you know not exercising and all that. You don't put on weight overnight, right? You don't suddenly get up one Monday morning and say, "Oh, I'm overweight." No, it happens over a period of time. It's in small increments, right? So the writer of Hebrews is warning us, you know, give the earnest heed to the things that you have already heard, the things that you have already received, the truth that you're walking in. You know, be careful, be alert with those things that you've already received, that you already have, right? And what you think to be your strength right now, if you're not alert, we will drift away. Okay, so drifting away happens over a period of time. It happens, um, you know, it happens in small increments or small, uh, you know, compromises. But it's possible to drift far. Suddenly we realize that, hey, I've, I used to be so strong, but now I am actually... You know, I've, I've gone so far away. I used to be so close uh, to the Lord, to the Word. I used to be strong in these things, but now I realize that actually I've actually gone far away. You know, why did that happen? How did that happen? Probably, you know, certain decisions we made, certain reasonings we made, you know, about the very things that we were strong in. And we let go of some things. We made some compromises, and it happened over a period of time. Okay? So the Scripture warns against that. Uh, you know, as real as that drifting away is, I just want to say that so also our being rooted in, being established in something, or something, uh, I should not say something, being established in the Word of God, in the truth, and walking strong in it. Right? As real as drifting away is, so also our being rooted and our being strong in the truth of God's Word and walking in it. Okay, so that's the good news that when we give earnest heed to the things that we have heard, the opposite of that happens. Right? Instead of drifting away, we are strong. Instead of being making compromises, we are actually making you know, strong decisions, good decisions, not poor choices. Right? The opposite of that is very, very true. And you know, if you if you read through Hebrews, he's, he's, the writer is saying, you know, we we expect these things, we expect these good things. To happen, we expect better things to happen rather than you compromising and giving up and walking in defeat. We expect you to walk, you know, we expect those things to happen, like the good things to happen, right? So that's the exhortation. So why don't we just pray and uh, say, Lord, I, I choose to give the earnest heed to those things that I have heard. You know, there's all things that you have brought into my life, to those, the truth that you are establishing me in. Lord, I choose to give earnest heed. I choose to be alert. I choose to be obedient. I choose not to be deceived, ju just to be a hearer of the word, just to be an analyzer of the word, uh, not to be just an appreciator of the word, but I'd be a doer of the word. 
Father, we, we commit ourselves into your mighty hands. Lord, we thank you for this exhortation, God, that even as the reality of drifting away is, is there in our lives, God, for the believer, but so also the reality of being established, continually being established in your word, continually being built up and rooted up uh, in your word, oh, Father God. Lord, we, we thank you that those are the better things, Lord, that you desire from each one of us. And we choose to do that, God. We choose to walk in it, Father God. We choose to be attentive and diligent, Lord, in the things that you have, Lord, established in us, Father. We thank you. We give you all the praise and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Right. So, yeah, we've been um, studying about the principles right um the principles for uh for walking in prosperity right walking in godly uh or financial stewardship walking in godly prosper the principles right the godly principles things that actually work we've been we've been, we were walking talking about the hindrances so we need to give you know give away those things and then about the principles that we can actually put to practice and one of the things that we said was uh, last thing we looked at was honoring God in our finances, like honoring God in our finances. So uh, today, let's look at um, when we come to think of you know honoring God with our finances. Um, there is this aspect of three things that we can look at. Okay, uh, one is what God has laid down in Scripture about tithing, uh, what God says about giving, and what God says about alms or helping others. Right? So let's look at those um, three uh, things. Okay, so what do we understand about um, uh, you know tithing? What does that word mean? Okay. Tithe. What does that word mean? Okay, it's ten percent, one tenth. Okay, so it's a it's a Hebrew word which which is mahasayer which actually means this one-tenth, okay, a uh, tenth of what we have to give it. I mean, it just means a tenth, okay. So in Scripture, we see that God establishes something or there is this practice of tithing, which is there in Scripture, right? So let's look at a few Scriptures uh, which talk about that. Um, okay, this the notes for this, I'll upload it a little later, right? Okay, so... Every time you think of tithe, what scripture comes to your mind? Yeah, so you know that, that's the, that's the answer. You know, most times, you know, when we think of tithing, we go to Malachi three, okay, the last uh, book of the Old Testament, and it's actually a, it's, it seems like a warning. It's a harsh word. It's a, it's a rebuke, and that's our association with tithing. Okay, so it's like. Oh, I better do it. If I don't do it, I'm actually robbing God. And God takes this seriously, so I better do it. So tithing is never looked at as, a, as something joyful, as an act of worship, right? as a part of a covenant. Right? So we looked at, okay, I need to do it. Something bad will happen if I don't do it. And so I better do it. Okay, that's most of the thing. Okay, so anyway, since we said Malachi 3, let's look at it. Okay, Malachi 3 and verse 8. Okay, will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, in what way have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings. You are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open to you the windows of heaven and pour out to you such blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground. Nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field, says the Lord of hosts. And all the nation, nations shall call you blessed, for you will be a delightful land, says the Lord of hosts. Okay, So we read this i think uh, as ministers maybe we preach it and you know just before the offering time and say hey you don't want to rob god you better do it and then put the fear of god in you know but actually when you look at it it is worshiping the lord 
out of the plenty that he's given us everything belongs to him right if even if we are earning lakhs and lakhs either through our business or salary or whatever we realize that if you look at it you know it's the grace of god right the fact that you're living the fact that you have the skills and abilities the fact that the grace of god has enabled you and placed you in these circumstances and the favor of god has surrounded you and you know brought you into that environment maybe it's the grace of god and so everything all that we are actually belongs to him actually belongs to him so willingly you know we look at these things and even it's it's actually an act of worship okay so some people say okay this is this is the old testament it's there as a law you know as some principle uh, that was established in the old testament but actually if you look at it tithing goes beyond or even before the time the law was established when was the law given to moses right from that time you see the precepts and the and the and the, and the principles and the law being given to moses but if you if you look at scripture we see that even before the law was given okay and historians say you know at least four centuries or so before the law was given you know when you look at genesis 14 okay genesis 14 and uh, let's turn there genesis 14 and verse um okay 14 and verse um yeah verses 18 onwards then melchizedek king of salem brought out bread and wine he was the priest of god most high and he blessed him and said blessed be abram of god most high possessor of heaven and earth and blessed be god most high who has delivered your enemies into your hand and he gave him a tithe of all okay this is during abraham's time and we see this whole incident that happens with melchizedek he's a priest of god and in, and melchizedek you know about melchizedek well it's a mystery because we understand that he doesn't have a beginning at the end we read in hebrews about melchizedek right and um, we see that abraham uh, even before he was called abraham abram he gave a tithe of all to melchizedek he was a priest okay so we see that there was this understanding of tithe even before the law was given right just as we see during the time of cain and abel that there was this understanding of bringing um what was grown you know what was what was cultivated what was you know bringing it to god as an offering so that understanding was there even before the lord said okay this shall be so this is what you must do this is what you do on certain days okay so it was it was we could say it was as as part of a covenant relationship okay as part of um, you know as as part of us relating to god as our provider as our father and as uh, it it tithing is uh, something that we do in order to honor him okay so let's um, so that's that's it okay it's 1/10 okay um matthew 22 also talks about it let's look at that um and look at some of the reasons why you know what people have against the tithe okay um okay matthew 22 and um this okay 2221 okay where um where the lord says sorry oh okay oh okay. yeah is this um uh, render to caesar the things that are caesar's and to god the things that are god's okay so so lord is saying okay this is you give to man what belongs to man or the government what belongs to the government what you what is rightfully laid out as per the law of the land maybe and you give to god what belongs to god 
know, what is rightfully his. Okay. And we see in Malachi that God says that bring this, do this with regard to the tithe. Bring it into the storehouse. Okay. So people have, uh, you know, maybe some reasonings about tithes. Okay, one of the um, one of the things could be okay. Let's look at some of the reasons why people have uh, something against a tithe. Okay, maybe one reason could be lack of knowledge or lack of right understanding of tithes. Okay, so maybe there's no no the concept of tithe. Okay, we all maybe you become a believer and then maybe there's no revelation, no teaching, no concept of tithe. Therefore, okay, whenever, whenever there's this whole thing of tithe and offering, and you know, you you think that it's it's not in the scripture, maybe. Okay. Secondly, uh, it could be fear. It could be fear. Fear that I have this, I have only so much, and I have this need, and this has to take care of my need. Now, if I do this, if I take a tenth of this hard-earned money, or, you know, in case of a farmer, it will be a crop or whatever, if I take this and give it away, okay, give it away as an offering, as an act of worship, then what about this need? Right? The fact is, this need has to be met, and I have this this much to take care of this need. It's not like I, the minute I put the tithe in the offering, somehow this need will go away. No, right? The the house owner is not going to come and say, "Today I'm going to you know clear you." of your rent, no problem, don't pay the rent. He's not going to say that, right? The electricity bill, you know, the KEB will come and say, if you don't pay the, the thing, we're going to take the fuse out. The reality is this. So it could be fear. What if I do this and my needs go unmet? What, what if I suffer because of it? So it could be fear. Okay. Um, third thing, it could be even selfishness, saying that, okay, I need it. I need it for myself. I, it's, it's mine. Okay. It's mine. I need it. Uh, I earned it. I have a right to it. And so it could be because of the self or you're you know, selfish about it. Um, it could also be fear mixed with deception. You know, uh, fear because of, maybe because of abuse. Okay. Um, you know, even especially today's, uh, you know, if you if you look at anything, any video, any social media, anything, and if you're looking about, you know, you televangelists or people who are doing doing ministry on the net and so on, there's a lot of talk about money. There's a lot of ways in which people are raising money, and there's a lot of ways which are not right, right? Which are not right, which are manipulative, right? Which which are, you know, people want to play on people's fears, uh, play on people's greed, uh, play on people's ignorance. And, and it's sad that in the, name of, in the name of God that all this is happening. And it's bringing a bad name to the, to the church at large, right? It's bringing a bad name. Christ is being dishonored because of that. And people are saying, okay, these guys are always out to get money for some of their funding, some of their projects, and they are, you know, they are doing this at the, our expense. Okay. So it could be that I'm never, ever going to be cheated again. You know, these guys are doing this, so I'm not going to give to any ministry, any, anything. And, um, you know, that's, okay. so it could be because of that, right? A bad experience it could be fear um, mixed with, uh, you know, bad experience. Okay. Sorry, yeah. Then it could be things that we believe about scripture, right? Uh, it could be um, things that we believe, like one of the things is uh, that we could believe is that uh, it's part of the Old Testament. It's part of the Old uh, Old Testament laws, 
right now i am in the new dispensation i'm born again i'm in the new dispensation and uh, you know i don't go and sacrifice an animal i don't go and keep all these religious things which are actually laid out in the old testament so i don't have to do this one thing which is again listed right? this one thing which is listed as a tithe yeah. so that's a very strong argument right what if uh, you know uh, all those things uh, which are listed as the law as the rituals of the law well i don't keep it because christ has come as the as the end of the law so uh, i don't have to keep the law right righteousness comes not from the law but by grace in christ so i don't have to do it okay so we uh, you know it could be that but we understand that you know this when you read genesis 14 and 20 we see that it is actually something that was established an understanding that was there in relating to god even before the law came into being okay so we can't go by that argument it is there even before okay um it's so it's it's part of a you know covenant it's part of how we are relating to god okay um and of course the thing is that tithing ended at the cross okay till the cross yeah it's okay to give the tithe but tithing ended at the cross okay. now we need to understand there's a lot of things that ended at the cross okay things that were ritualistic in the old testament which ended at the cross right what are some of those the blood sacrifice the sacrifice of animals right why did it end at the cross because the lord jesus was that sacrificial ram that perfect sacrifice that one sacrifice to which we are all made perfect and being sanctified right so it's very clear that that was that final and scripture talks about that that this is he was that final sacrifice so there's no more requirement for any more sacrifices okay so where do we find that hebrews in the book of hebrews hebrews 9 verse 11 um, hebrews um, 9 and verse 12 okay let's look at a couple of verses right let's go to hebrews 9 um so we, we're just looking at these because um you know things are a little fuzzy you know very unclear when it comes to uh tithing and and we could be in that place right um okay so let's look at uh, hebrews 9 and verse 11 okay, which says that christ came as high priest of the good things to come with the greater and more perfect tabernacle not made with hands that is not of uh, this creation Okay, verse 12, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, he entered the most holy place once for all. Okay, that phrase, once for all, which means for everyone, once for all, having obtained eternal redemption. Okay, then we, we go down to um, um, verse 25, it says, not that he should offer himself often, as the high priest enters the most holy place every year with the blood of another okay so um, as we go through that whole chapter and especially from verse 11 onwards we see that okay this was once for all it was done once one point in time so that it need not be repeated okay so the blood sacrifice ended with the sacrifice of the lord jesus on the cross okay the next one who had access to the Father, who had access to the Holy of Holies, it was the high priest once a year, right? He had access. Now that also ended with the, with the cross while all of us were made as priests, as the royal priesthoods, priests and kings unto God, right? And when we read, um, if you look at Hebrews 4, verse 16, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace right let us come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain so who uh, what is that exhortation for what is that invitation for for all of us right people who are 
blood bought, blood washed. Right? So we also see that we are kings and priests unto God. We are the royal priesthood. Okay, so no more is it, uh, no more it is the, the, the priest or the high priest who goes once a year on behalf of the people. It is no more that, but each one of us have access to God the Father. Okay, so this whole thing of the high priest representing the people, going to the presence of God on behalf of the people, going to the people on behalf of God, that ended, right? where each one of us, we have access 24-7 to the Father. So we can hear the voice of God, we have access to God's presence, and so on. The one more thing is about, um, you know, praise and worship with musical references. Um, so, you know, things like that. Uh, you know, here it didn't end, but actually it continues in the sense that, yeah. Twenty-three point. Oh. Okay. 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 So Anand's question is, uh, or statement is that the tithing is not just ten percent, but it can be more than ten percent. Um, uh, it can be 20 percent or 23 point uh, point three, yeah, okay, three percent and so on. So, uh, do you have scriptural reference for these things? Okay. Um. Oh. Uh, no, you just tell me. I'll I'll repeat it here. Uh, just tell me the scriptural reference, please. Okay, Numbers eighteen twenty. Okay, let's look at that. Um, um, just one second. Okay. 20? 20, 20, yeah? Okay. Numbers 20, verse 20. Mm. 20, 20, is it? Numbers 20. Oh, 18, 20. Okay, okay, sorry. 18, 20. Okay, then the Lord said to Aaron, you shall have no inheritance in the land, nor shall you have any portion among them. I am your portion and your in inheritance among the children of Israel. Okay, then verse 21, Behold, I have given the children of Levi all the tithes in Israel as an inheritance uh, in return for the work which they perform, the work of the tabernacle of meeting. Okay. Okay, so that, that doesn't give any indication of what percentage. Right? Okay. Second one? Yeah. Okay, Deuteronomy 12. 12, 6, huh? okay. Okay, so there you shall take your burnt offerings, your sacrifices, your tithes, the heave offerings of your hand, your warved offerings, your free will offerings, and the firstborn of your herds and flocks, and there you shall eat before the Lord your God, and you shall rejoice in all which you have put your hand, and you and your households in which the Lord your God has blessed you. Yeah. So, so along with the tithes, there are other things that they are actually... Yeah, taking and, and offering unto the Lord. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Um, so we're looking at how can we consider this in our time, in our day and time? Do we have to follow the 20, 23 person? So I don't know how we are arriving at the 23. Okay, uh, we can discuss that later. But the thing is this, you know, um, first of all, uh, 
it's something that that is not stopped to the Old Testament. That's we need to understand that we carried on into the New Testament also, because the Lord Jesus also talks about it. Um, uh, we look at that verse in a little while. Um, but the fact is that um, um, the fact is that Titus, when you look at it, it's it's a minimum. See, the reality is that everything that I have belongs to God. Okay, everything that I have belongs to God. And but the Lord has established this thing that okay, you do it in a, as an act of worship. Okay, so when you look at it, you are actually free to give more and beyond this. You know this one tenth. You're free to give, and and uh, you know this history is full of people who have actually given. Um, who who uh, who we say uh, you know they do a reverse tithing in the sense they keep ten percent. And they give away ninety—I mean, ninety percent of it, you know, or they they live on twenty percent and then they, yeah, sorry, give away eighty percent of it. There are people who have done that, you know. So for them, it's like uh, this is what I require actually. Okay, this will take care of my needs, and God has blessed me with plenty. So I, what, what do I do with it? You know, I. So I give into the work of ministry, and uh, so there are people who do that. They really challenge your, you know, thinking in that way. So, yeah. So, uh, so, you know, even, even the tithe, we're saying that you give it freely, you give it out of your heart, but it's something that God desires uh, to, you know, what happens when we actually give, right? We are saying, uh, Lord, I honor you uh, with this. You are my provider. Because you're saying, because you know, if you look at it, it is you have needs, and maybe you know you have needs that this is exactly fitting in. You know, this is exactly taken care of. But despite that, you're taking a step of faith and you're honoring God and you're saying, God, you are my provider, right? So you're doing that, and also we're saying that, okay, God, this I'm, you know, whatever I'm giving uh, is for the work of your kingdom. It's for the you know blessing other people, maybe. And so, you know, you're you're saying, okay, I'm blessed in order to bless others. You're fulfilling that part also. You know, not only just honoring God, but uh, you know, taking that small step in blessing other people. Okay. So, so yeah. So that, that's the thing. You know, we don't have to ha come hard and fast and say ten percent only. But ten percent is really a is a suggestion. It's a minimum when we look at New Testament. It's uh, because everything actually belongs to him, right? So this twenty-three percent, you probably you can come back with more details. We can look at that. But but actually, if you look at it, everything belongs to him. So it's we go with this. You know, we we are we can in our hearts we can give beyond, uh, you know, more in, uh, uh, above and beyond that ten, right? Okay. Um, yeah, okay. Would we say it's a tithe? Huh? I'm not sure because it's not mentioned there, but uh, it was definitely uh, an act of worship. I'm not sure whether it was, I mean, because it doesn't say they just went and offered it to the Lord, it says. So. Yeah. I'm not sure. It may could be. I don't know. But you, you see that concept of the material being offered to God. You know, does He need it? Absolutely not. But then, us saying that I'm, I'm, you know, out of gratitude, um, and bringing it and saying, okay, this is the plenty that I've got that I've received, and I'm offering it to you. So that concept is there uh, when we when we see that. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions online? Um, yes, yeah, Shira. Any references in the New Testament for tithing? No? Okay. So this is what we see. Um, okay. Let's look at um, you know uh, Matthew twenty three twenty three. Um, Okay, 23, 23. Um, 
So this is um, the Lord the rebuke to the scribes and Pharisees. Okay, so it said. Um, he who swears by heaven and swears by, uh, sorry, 23. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin and have neglected the weightier matters of the law, justice and mercy and faith. And he says, these you ought to have done without leaving the others undone. Okay. So what he's saying, he's saying, these you ought to have done without leaving the others undone. In the sense, the weightier matters of law and justice and mercy, uh, you ought to have done without leaving the others undone. You know, he's talking about the tithing. So a reference to that. Of course, uh, it was during the earthly ministry of the Lord Jesus. So, you know, he's talking about that. It was before he went to the cross. You know, that also we need to keep in mind. But, um, you know, he's, he's talking about that. Okay. Then uh, we see um, one more reference is, um, okay, Matthew 5, 17. Okay, so 517 is an indirect reference. He says, do not think I came to destroy the law of the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Okay, so in the, uh, when, it, when we come to the New Testament, we look at it, right? Um, uh, we'll, we'll just um, look at a couple of more verses. And it's not specific to tithe, but also involves giving. Okay, we'll, we'll look at that in a little while. Okay. Um, but before that, let's look at Hebrews 7. Okay, so um, Hebrews 7, referring to Melchizedek and what Abraham did, right? It says, to whom Abraham gave a tenth part, uh, tenth part of all, uh, and then it's talking about Melchizedek uh, without genealogy, etc. And then he says, here mortal men receive tithes. Okay, so which means that there was something that was happening in the New Testament times, right? So writer of Hebrews saying, here mortal men receive tithes in the sense if, you, if you're if you going to give uh, maybe as, as an act of worship, you know, or maybe in a gathering, mortal men receive tithes, but he says, but there he receives them of whom it is witness that he lives. So there's a, of course we don't understand all, all of it, but we see the spiritual aspect of it. And right? so the writer of Hebrews is writing to the present day church of that times after the cross, after the resurrection ascension, and uh, he's referring to the tithes and he's saying here, mortal men receive the tithes that you bring, but there he receives them. You know, something that um, it's as if, you know, what we are doing here has a spiritual connotation as a we received you know what we're giving here is received by god so so you know these are some things references that we can say okay any yeah 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 she gave those yeah those two coins and then yeah she that's all that she had and she gave it yeah your question is uh Yeah, New Testament. Yeah, but Shira was asking about um, today. A reference in the New Testament, of course. But uh, beyond the cross, you know, that was the earthly ministry, right? Yeah, that's what. So when we look at Hebrews 7, so that's an indicator that, yes, it was actually something that was being done there during in the churches, and the writer of Hebrews is writing to them. No, no, no. I, at the cross, there are certain things which men ended. The blood sacrifice ended. Uh, so those are certain things. <laughs> okay, if if uh, if I said like that, uh, please delete. <laughs> it was a mistake. I was saying that I think did not end at the cross. You know, we were looking at some of the things that actually ended, which is blood sacrifice um, and and the other things, right? Something's ended at the cross. Oh, I mentioned tithing also, is it? No, I didn't. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Anyway. Yeah, see, access to the Father. like All that changed, right? 
um, at the cross. Okay, so that's about um, you know that's what we see about tithing. Um, so if we look at um, yeah, let's uh, let's just go to uh, yeah, um, just one second. Um, let's look at a couple of uh, verses. Um, Second Corinthians nine. Second okay. Corinthians nine, and uh, was a six to eight. Okay, Second Corinthians nine and verse six. Um, so this is also in the context of giving. Okay, so so we talked about tithes. We talked about offerings. Okay, which is um, which is way which is beyond, you know. Above, above and beyond what we are tithing, right? So here, um, Second Corinthians nine, Paul is actually writing to the Corinthian church, and he's telling them, he's reminding them about giving, and he's also comparing um, another church, the Macedonians, who are actually not well off, right? But were very, very rich in the sense with their generosity, right? This was a uh, it was the people who were actually in poverty, but they opened their hearts to the gospel and they wanted to support the ministry of Paul uh, during that time. So he's referring to referencing them. You know? um, so he says, I know of your willingness about which I boast of you to the Macedonians and uh, and so on. Uh, and he's he, he, and he's saying, you know, if the Macedonians come and find you unprepared, you know, I don't want that kind of a situation, right? So he says. In verse 6, but this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. He who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Now that's the agricultural you know, principle, right? So he's saying, so let each give as he purposes in his heart. Okay, so it's the attitude of giving. As he purposes in, it, in his heart, not grudgingly, or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Okay, so as you purpose in your heart, so he's talking about giving, he's got giving towards the work of God. Okay, we're not talking about tithing anymore, he's talking about giving, and he's saying, God, um, you know, he sows bountifully, will reap bountifully, so let each one give as he purposes in his heart. So, what does that mean? As you decide in your heart. Okay, so maybe you're there and, uh, you know, maybe it's a church service or whatever. And you purpose in your heart, you decide, you in participation or in conversation with the Father, uh, with God, you decide. Okay, you purpose in your heart. And it says, not grudgingly or of necessity. What does grudgingly mean? Hesitatingly. Or of necessity, you know, as a sense of obligation. Oh offering time i need to do something i need to give you don't have to be under necessity you know it's so it's so liberating you know contrary to how sometimes offerings are taken or offerings are collected right it's so it's so liberating he's saying paul is saying hey not grudgingly or out of necessity you know you, there's no obligation now and he says god loves a cheerful giver God loves a cheerful giver. And there is this principle of when you sow, you are reaping. Okay? And, and, and it says, God, verse 8, and God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you, having all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good work. Okay? That you have uh, all sufficiency, all things that you may have an abundance for every good work. Uh, as it is written, he has dispersed abroad, he has given to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. Now may he who supplies seed to the sower. Okay, this is a very important verse, by the way. There's so much in it. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food, supply and multiply 
the seed you have sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness while you are enriched in everything for all liberality which causes thanksgiving through us to God. Okay, so he's saying, may he, you know, he's just prayer, he's saying, may he who supplies seed to the sower, okay, which means that, you know, seed, it is sown, there's time and there's harvest and, uh, and, the, and then with the harvest, you prepare whatever, the food and everything. So, so he's saying God is the one who prepares seed, who gives seed to the sower, right? So he can actually do that entire process. And he gives the finished product also. He gives the bread for food. Okay? So God can supply our needs in you know, these ways. And he's saying, you know, God who gives seed to the sower and bread for food, may he uh, supply and multiply the seed that you have sown. So may he supply the seed to you so that you can sow it and you can you know, go through the entire process of having a good harvest. May he supply the seed and multiply the seed that you have sown. Okay, that you having all sufficiency in all things, you know, that's a, verse 8, right? Increase the fruits of your, multiply the seed you have sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness while you are enriched in everything for all liberality. So, the, so you see the objective of God providing that he wants to enrich us in everything for all liberality. What does that mean? What does that mean? What does being liberal mean? He's very liberal with this. Liberal, liberal, liberality, liberty is freedom, right? Liberality is freedom. Okay, so that you are enriched for all liberality, meaning that you are free to do, free to give. You know, so he's saying you are enriched for this purpose, right? That's what we see, enriched in everything for all liberality which causes thanksgiving through us to god okay so we see that it is actually very free okay? it's not out of grudgingly it's not out of necessity or obligation uh, oh god is going to punish me now uh, it is with a heart lord is inviting us for a blessing He's saying, okay, I want to bless you. You know, this is the principle that you have. In fact, if you, you look at it as something that is sown, something that you will reap, and something that you will reap abundantly. Okay. So now this can be twisted and manipulated, you know, saying, okay, you need to sow, only then you will reap. Or, you know, if you're sowing less, that is what you will reap. You know, it can, and, and, and we are, you know, that if you look at, the church, the church is guilty of doing all this to put fear in people, to manipulate people emotionally, blackmail rather, into giving. Right? But when we see, when you look at tithing, when we look at giving, when we look at helping people, you know, it's actually uh, out of uh, the fullness of our heart. It is an act of worship. You know, when we worship God, you know, like we've been doing, we, we do it uh, joyfully. Right, you don't do it hesitating. Maybe you know one day you're having a bad mood. Maybe you're feeling tired. <laughs> yeah, you, you might be you know hesitant. But then your you know your heart is to to worship Him, right? When we understand to you know this is how we worship in in freedom, spirit and in truth, without pretense. So also you know you look at giving and tithing in that manner. Right? I'm going to do this as an act of worship to God. Not out of fear, not drudgingly, not out of necessity. Okay, uh, we'll stop here and then we'll continue in our next class. Um, thank you, those who are watching us online. We'll catch up next class. Bye bye.